Start using Google Sheets with Railsware Product Academy. Our previous video about Google Sheets for beginners gathered over 800,000 of views, and we would like to thank you for all of your support. It's time to update the tutorial and add brand new features presented in 2021. If you have never used Google Spreadsheets in the past and need to learn how it works right now, start watching and taking notes. If I'm talking too fast or too slow, modify the playback speed in the video settings. And if you want to jump right to a specific section, use timestamps in the video description. Ok, let's see how it works. I will explain all the spreadsheets basics for you to quick start using this tool. You will learn how to create a spreadsheet, how to work with rows, columns and cells, how to enter data, format cells and use the most common formulas and functions. All of your spreadsheets are stored in Google Drive. This is a cloud storage for your files. If you don't have a Google account, click pause and create one now. It takes just a few minutes. And if you already have an account, go to google.com and click on the nine dots in the upper right corner to choose the drive icon. You have three options to create a spreadsheet. You can create a new one by clicking a new button in the left upper corner. Here you can see all the available file types. GDocs is like Word in Microsoft Office, GSheets like Excel, GSlides like PowerPoint, and so on. Hover your mouse over the arrow on the right of the GSheets option. Here you can choose between a blank spreadsheet or a template. You can choose a template from a Google Gallery or upload your own to use in the future. Probably you have worked in a different popular spreadsheets tool, Excel. So the third option to create a G-sheet will be to upload your existing Excel file, which will convert into a G-sheet automatically. To do this, go to the settings and check the convert uploaded files. Now right-click on an empty place and select Upload File. Here you can see your laptop files directory. Choose a folder that contains the file you want to upload, select a file and then click Open. The file was uploaded and now it gets the G-sheet icon, so you can work with this data. It's possible to upload a CSV file this way as well. Today we're going to work with a spreadsheet that I've prepared for you. As an example, we're going to edit a simple dataset representing a services invoice. Here we have a description of services provided, units, quantity, the price per unit and the total price. If you want to follow along with the tutorial, you can copy this spreadsheet. Click pause and find the link below in the description. When you click on the link, the copy of my G-sheet will get created and open in a new window. Thus, you can work alongside me. You can move the G-sheets file to any folder by clicking on this folder sign and choosing the final destination. This way, you can easily find the spreadsheet later on. First, let's rename our spreadsheet. Click on this field in the top left corner and write down the name. I'll name mine my first Google Sheet. Before you start working in a Google Sheet, you need to go to File, Spreadsheet Settings and check your locale, because it will affect the formatting details such as functions, dates and currency. We choose the US locale. A single spreadsheet file in your drive can consist of many sheets. You can insert as many as you wish. You may want to locate each new dataset on the new tab. In this example, I have sheets named Invoice and Weather. Here you see the name of your current sheet. Add a new tab by clicking the plus sign in the bottom left corner. 
you can rename it by double-clicking on it. I will name this one Test Task. To duplicate your current sheet, right-click on the name of the sheet you want to copy and select Duplicate from the menu. To change the order of the tabs, click on the sheet, hold and drag it to the new position. For example, click on the Sheet tab named Weather and drag it before the test task. There we go! If a spreadsheet consists of many tabs, use color coding to better navigate through those. You can also use different colors to mark in which project a specific tab is used. Right-click on the sheet, change color and choose a color that you want. You can see this tab was highlighted in green. Another option that saves time is using this button, called a hamburger, to see the full list of sheets that you get. You can see that the spreadsheet consists of rows with numeric indexes and columns with alphabetic indexes. At the intersection of each column and a row, there is a cell, which index consists of two parameters, index of the column and index of the row. For example, this cell's ID is A3 for column A and row 3, and this cell's C1. To select a cell, you can click on it or use arrows. If you want to select a range, click on the cell to start from, hold the left mouse button and drag over the other cells to select. Or click on the first and the last cell of the range while holding Shift. To select separate cells and add them to a single range, hold Ctrl and click on cells you want to choose. To select the whole row or column, click on its index. To select the whole spreadsheet, click on the upper left corner button. Now, let's talk about the data that you can enter. You can add a text, numerical value, currency, percentage or a date. To enter the data in a cell, just click on the cell and start typing or you can write in a function field above. Its size can be adjusted by pulling down this arrow sign. If you want to enter a multi-line text in one cell, click on it and start typing in the field above. Press Alt plus Enter for PC or Command plus Enter for Mac when you want to add a space line. When you finish entering the data, you can hit Enter to save data and go to the cell below or hit Tab to go to the cell on the right. It helps you consistently insert data. Or you can click on a cell where you want to put the data next. The cell can contain not only text and numbers but even links. For example, let's enter the text in this cell. I type weather here because I want to add a link to this page. Then I right-click on it and choose Insert a link. You can see that it is possible to add a link to the website. Just type the page address or copy it from your browser, to a different sheet in this file or even to a range in this sheet. I add the link to the weather sheet. Now, our text becomes blue and underlined, which means that we added the link successfully. Let's test how it works. Select the cell and click on the link that pops up below. And here we go, we move to the sheet weather. The recent update of Google Sheets allows us to insert multiple links in a single cell. I enter Google Maps and Google News in this cell. Double-click on the cell, highlight the first word and press Ctrl-K for PC or Command-K for Mac to insert the link. Start typing Google Maps and choose this link. Click Apply. Then select the second word, Ctrl-K and insert another link to Google News website. Now we see that two links are shown here. Another great G-Sheet feature allows us to insert an image in a cell to illustrate the data. Select a cell, click Insert in the menu, Image, Image in a cell. 
Here, we can upload an image from the computer, take a picture if you're using Google Sheets on your cell phone, add a link to the picture, select a photo or image from your G Drive account, or just ask Google to find you an image you'd like. I type cat and choose this pretty image. To make the size bigger, resize the cell. Click on the border you would like to move and drag it right or left to change the width. You can change the height of your row the same way. Also, you can resize the column to fit the text by double-clicking on the column's border like this. Not to click on every edge, highlight the range, double-click on any border and you can get a perfectly fitting text in all columns. Moreover, you can select the whole table Click and drag any border, I will resize this one, and you see that the other columns were resized as well. Now they are all of the same size. I go to the Invoice tab. As you will be shaping your table, you may want to add another row or column. You can insert them wherever you want. Let's insert a column right after the description. Select the description column. Right-click on it and choose the option Insert one right. And here we go! Remember that the new column will have the format of the column you have selected to insert from. Now, let's add two rows after the fifth row. You can repeat the operation that we do with the column twice or select two rows at once. Rows 4 and 5, right-click, Insert 2 below. Also, you may want to move a cell or change the order of columns or rows. For instance, we want the columns with dates to go after the column with a description. Select column A, click, hold and drag it. The gray line will show the place where the column is going to be added and go to the right place and drop. Now, I want to move this cell up to row 5. Select the cell. Hover your mouse to the upper edge and when the hand icon appears, click, drag and drop it to the new place. A new cell will replace the value of the old one, so it is better to move the cells into a blank space or you may lose the data. We can move not only one row, column or cell, but multiple ones. All you have to do is, for example, select the range A3 to B6 Click on the hand icon, hold, and move it to the new position. I click the undo arrow to return to the original version. Now, let's talk about how we can speed up our data entry process. Google Sheet Autofill function helps you create a list of numbers, dates, months, and so on. Probably you have noticed that some of the data in our table are missing. We need to continue the list of dates in column A. To do it, select the cell with the last date. Hover your mouse over the blue dot in the right lower corner of the cell, the pointer changes to a black plus sign, and click and drag this corner down. We get sequential dates in the column. You can fill the list not only in your column, but in a row too. For example, if we want to number our columns, enter 1 here, press tab, type 2, tab, and select both cells. Drag the lower corner of the right cell to the right to autofill the row. Autofill will also work with dates, times, and weekdays, so I will delete these numbers for now. Also, you can use autofill to copy your values. You can see that the selected unit in our invoice is our for all types of services. Let's autofill the rest of the cells in column C. Select the last cell and drag the right corner down. That's how you can copy the same value in a column or a row fast. I hope you're not tired yet as we're just getting to the most fun part formatting your spreadsheet and working with data. If you want to finish watching this tutorial a bit later, don't forget to subscribe to Rails for Product Academy channel and also save the link to this video. Let's talk about the interface of the Google Sheet. Here you can see the main menu and the quick access toolbar below 
where you find the most common tools. If you forget the location of the tool you want to use, click on Help. Type the name of the tool in the search menu, for instance, Bold, and you get the result. Let's format our dataset so it becomes a table easy to read through. First, you can see that some text is too long and doesn't fit a cell. To deal with it, you can change the size of the column. Click on the border you'd like to move and drag it right or left to change the width. But this is not the only option. If you want to save the size of the column, you can format the text. Let's undo our previous steps by clicking on the arrow in the left corner. Now, select the cell and click on the text wrapping icon. Choose Wrap in the menu below. The text becomes multi-line to fit the width of the column. I want to tell you a little bit more about formatting the cells. These tools above help you to highlight your text. You can change the font of your text, size, and also highlight the text using bold, italic, and strike through. Choose a size 14 and bold for our header row. I want to change the format of a part of the text in it. Click on the cell and highlight the part of the text that you want to change in the function field above. Also, we can use coloring to alternate rows or columns. Let's highlight the header row in blue and change the text color to white. Use underline A sign to change the text color and these signs to highlight. To format the position of the values in our table, use these buttons. You can set up horizontal and vertical alignment, rotate the text at different angles. I want all the text to be at the center of the cell. Choose the range, click horizontal alignment and select center. Then vertical alignment, middle. To add the borders to our table, click on this sign. And here you can see all the options, including color and border style. We choose all borders for this case. If you want to remove the formatting, select the range, click the Format option in the menu, and click on Clear Formatting option. Take a moment and style your table as you like. To learn more about formatting in Google Sheets, stay with us to watch our big tutorial soon. Now, let's position the header of our table in the center. We need to combine a few cells into one big cell. First, select the range of cells. Then click on the arrow near the Merge Cell tool. And here you can see the types of merge. Choose horizontally. However, we advise you to avoid merging cells, because you will use Google Sheets formulas and calculations a lot, and those do not work with the merged cells. To avoid a situation when you screen through your spreadsheet searching for a merged cell that doesn't let your function work, just don't use this option. It works only in cases when you need a tab for data representation, not analysis. As you can see, our table contains prices. To add a currency symbol to our values, we need to select the range format of which we would like to change, which is this one and click on the currency sign on the toolbar. Because I set the US locale in the beginning, the dollar sign appears as a default in the menu. If you have a different locale, most probably you will see your local currency sign here. Use these tools above to increase or decrease decimal places. You can change the currency to any existing one. Highlight the currencies you'd like to change Click Format, Number, More Formats here, More Currencies, and choose the one you want. Also, you can turn your value into a percentage by clicking on the percent sign. Be careful here, because if you apply this format to the cell that already has a number in it, it will be multiplied by 100%. So sometimes it is easier to enter the percent sign manually. This way the percentage formatting will be applied automatically. Now, when we know how to enter the data and format it, we will learn how to copy it. 
you can copy one cell, a range of cells or an entire row or column. Let's copy the range of cells A3 to B10. Select them and you can use a well-known shortcut, Ctrl-C or right-click and select Copy. The blue box appears showing us that we're gonna copy this range. Now select a destination cell, let it be this one. Right-click on it, paste or press Ctrl-V. Remember that if you paste the range to the cell with values, it will rewrite the existing data. You may notice that the copy-paste function moves not only the value, but the format of the cell by default. So we get the borders here too. If you import the data from another source, its format may not correspond to your existing spreadsheet. To avoid correcting the format manually, we can use the Paste Special feature. It offers us a big variety of paste options that you can choose from. Select the range of cells A3 to B10 again. Press Ctrl-C or Command-C for Mac. Select where we want to paste the value. Right-click, Paste Special, Paste Values Only. We copied the text without formatting while keeping the format of the destination cell. Paste Special feature allows us to copy formatting of the cell as well. Copy this cell with the applied format and select this cell which already contains value. Right-click, Paste Special, Paste Format Only. This way we save the data of the destination cell and only change the format. You can paste the format to the range of cells too. Another way to use copy-paste is to transpose your data from columns into rows and vice versa. Save your time and don't copy the cells one by one. Select the range D3 to D10, press Ctrl-C, select a destination cell, right-click, paste special, paste transposed. We get our values in a row. Now let's talk about how we can easily format data imported from other sources. Sometimes this data may be in a format that is unsuitable for your data set. Look at the invoice table. As you can see, column B consists of the descriptions of the job, but also there are names of people who were responsible for this task. We need to separate our text into two columns, description and responsible person. Let's insert an extra column after the first one, so half of the text can go there. Select the first column, click on the arrow sign and choose to insert one right. Now we select this range of cells. Click data in the menu above, split text to columns. You see that our cells were split automatically. Notice the field below our range. Here you can choose the delimiter based on which the content of the cell was separated. Our separator was chosen automatically, but if you click on these arrows, you'll see the list of possible separators. It can be a comma, which is used in our case because our names and descriptions are separated by comma, or a space, semicolon, or a dot. Another way to split the text automatically is to use a Smart Fill feature. It was introduced in 2020 and now Google Sheets is smart enough even to detect and learn patterns between columns to autocomplete data entry. Let's return to the original version of the table. Click the Undo button in the left upper corner. Now let's type Jack here. Press Enter, Jane here. And now press Ctrl, Shift and Y to autofill the rest of the cells with the names. If you click on any of these cells, you will see that Google used a formula to complete our row with names. So if you try to copy the cell and paste it to another place, you will get an error. To avoid it, use Paste Special, select Values Only. Now we have a text in a cell. Take a pause and work with the spreadsheet at your own pace. Data imported from a different source can contain an extra space. If you're going to use a function, it's crucial that your data don't contain any unneeded double spaces. It would be difficult to detect such cells manually. The Trim White Space feature will help us fix this problem. 
I made some mistakes in column B and added some extra spaces. Let's choose the whole spreadsheet by clicking on the left upper corner to check the whole sheet. Click data here, trim white space, and here we have a message about how many cells have been cleaned up. One of the coolest features of G Sheets is that you don't have to think whether you saved your file or not. The tool will do it automatically for you once you make any edits. Even though G Drive is a cloud storage and it requires internet connection to work, you can still edit your files offline and those will get updated once the connection is available. To enable offline access to your file, go to your Google Drive, click on the Settings button, find the Offline section and tick the box next to create, open and edit your files on this device while offline. Let's see how we can easily navigate a large data set. If we want to find a specific value in a cell, we don't need to read through the whole table. Use a well-known shortcut Ctrl F or Command F for Mac to search the value. Press Ctrl F and a little field pops up here Type text or a numeric value here and press Enter. Let's enter Jane. The results will be highlighted in green. To see the next match, use arrows near the search field. Find and replace feature will help us not only detect the cells which contain this value, but also to replace it with another value if needed. For example, we made a mistake and it's not Alice providing customer support, but Kate. Let's find all the cells that contain Alice and replace them with Kate. First, select the column C by clicking on it. Click Edit, Find and Replace. In the Find box, we type Alice. You can see that the Find button became active and now, by clicking on this button, we can look through all the cells with this value. Let's enter Kate in the Replace with box. After this, we can click on Replace it all button to change all the cells at once. Or if you don't want to replace all the cells in a range, we can click on the Find button to search for the needed cells and then click Replace to change the selected ones. Click on Done to close this menu. Find and Replace feature is also useful when you need to format imported data. As you can see, I entered decimal numbers in the invoice table here. In some numbers, I use a dot as a decimal separator and in others, comma. Our Lakeo setup, which we have selected at the beginning, will influence how Google Sheets will see our cells as text or as decimal numbers. In the US Lakeo, decimal numbers must be separated with dots. To change comma signs to dots, click Edit, Find and Replace box, and click Replace All. Here we can see the information about how many cells were replaced. Click on Done, and you see that all the values in column E now contain dots. If you just realized that you replaced some data with wrong values some time ago, don't worry, because Google Sheets has an Edit History tool. Select a cell that we have just changed, right-click on it, click on Show Edit History. In this field, you can find your latest edition. We have replaced the value. To see the previous ones, use the arrow above. Moreover, you can view the editing history of the whole spreadsheet. Click on the light grey text saying when the file was last edited. The version history menu opens on the right. It's like a time machine that allows you not only to view all the changes that were made, but even to return to the previous versions of your spreadsheet. You can see the list of past versions in the menu. Click on it to see how the sheet looked like at that time. Click on the Restore this version button to replace your current sheet with this one. You can click on the arrow near the version to expand the detailed versions. If you click on any version, the cells which were changed during that time will be highlighted. 
Our data set can consist of many rows. Click on the sheet named Weather. Here you can see the data set which consists of weather data samples. If you scroll down the sheet to see the last row, you can notice that the header of our table becomes invisible. And you have to go back to see what does the value in this column mean. To avoid repeating this action again and again, we can freeze the header row. You have two options. The easiest one is to hover your mouse to the bold line in the upper left corner. You see that the hand icon appears, then left click on it, hold and drag this line below the row you want to freeze. Scroll down the page. The header row stays on top of your sheet. You can perform the same operation to freeze the column. Another option would be to use the menu. Select a cell in a row that you would like to freeze. Click on View – Freeze one row. We get the same gray line here. It means that we froze the row successfully. Or you can freeze two rows or even a custom number of rows. If you want to fix the first four rows, select a cell in row 4 – View – Up to the current row. Take a moment and try to freeze a column by yourself. To unfreeze the row or column, select a cell, click View – No rows or columns. Sometimes a row or column can contain extra information that doesn't need to be shown in your table right now, but you don't want to delete those because they contain useful values. Or maybe you don't need some rows or columns to be printed. In these cases, you can hide this row or column. To do this, select a row or range of rows, right-click on the row, hide the row. The rows have disappeared, but these couple of arrows on either side of a hidden row show that they are still there. Also, you can notice that the numbering of the rows jumps from 3 to 7. To unhide these rows, click on those arrows. You can follow the same steps to hide columns. Let's hide columns E and G. To select non-adjacent columns, you need to hold Ctrl and click on Columns. Then click on the arrow and choose Hide Columns. For the same operations in Mac, you can use Command. Now, we will talk about the most useful features of Google Sheets. You can not only store your data in the file, but also calculate and analyze it. In Google Sheets, we can use the most basic math operators that we all know from school. Any calculation in a spreadsheet is called a formula. Let's return to the invoice sheet. We will perform some calculations to get the total amount in the invoice data set. To do this, we need to multiply cell E8 by cell F8. Select a cell where you want to get the result. The most important thing to remember before entering the formula or function is that you need to write an equal sign first. This lets G-Sheet know that you are entering a formula. Otherwise, you just get a text in a cell. So type an equal sign and now we need to give a reference to the cell. You can either click on this cell or type the index manually. You see that the colored box appears around the cell we've mentioned. Then type multiplication sign and add a reference to the second cell. Hit Enter and here is our result. You can use several operators in one formula. Select a cell with a formula, drag down this corner. Click on the last cell and you can see that the row indices of the cells changed according to the row index where we copied the formula. This type of cell references are called relative cell references. It means that they are adjusted when copied. Making all these calculations manually, given reference to every cell, can be quite time-consuming. So here we come to the most useful tool of a spreadsheet. I'm talking about functions in Google Sheets. A function is a built-in operation which helps to work with data in different ways, perform arithmetic, statistical, logical operations, and many more. But first, I would like to mention the useful option which allows you to get the results of the most commonly used functions automatically. Select the range of cells with total amounts and here in a quick sum window you can see the sum of these values, average value, minimum, maximum and also the count of cells. So you can just rewrite the results from here. 
But of course, the most convenient way would be to enter the function in a cell so you don't have to replace the result if the data will change. Let's get the total amount of our payments with the help of some function. Select the last cell in the column with total amount and enter an equal sign. Type the word SUM. Open the parents. And here you can see that a helper box is popped up, which provides us information about the definition and the syntax. We can either enter the references to each cell one by one separated with comma or type the reference to the whole range. To do this, use the drag and drop technique. Start with the first cell and drag it all the way down to the last one. Close the round brackets and hit enter. And there we go. If you want to learn more about some functions, watch our video on how to total a column in Google Sheets. I'll leave a link in the description for you. To count how many payments we have requested, we will use the count function. We do the same operation. Equal sign, count, open the round brackets. Now let's enter the reference to our range manually. G3, enter colon, G10. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. The function returns the number of numeric values in a range. Subscribe to our channel to learn more about count function and its variations. Click on the link in the right corner to watch it now or you can find it in the video description. As you may know, Google Sheets provides you with an opportunity to work with your teammates in a single spreadsheet simultaneously. This is a great way to collaborate with your teammates while working on data analysis. To share your G-Sheet, go to your Google Drive, right-click on the file, choose to share and enter an email address or select one from the list. Choose a level of accessibility for this person – a viewer, commenter or editor. You can also choose to show the spreadsheet to your organization or to anyone on the web who has the link. However, we recommend you to share it in this way only in the view mode. You can set it up here. Of course, you may ask how can I protect my data from someone re-entering or deleting values in it accidentally. Google took care of this too. Select the range or a whole table you want to protect, right-click on it, protect the range, and enter a description in a field above. Set the restrictions. You can choose to edit this range yourself only or provide access to someone by typing their email addresses in a field below. Now, as we have formatted our table, I want to talk about how we can print the spreadsheet. It may sound easy. Just click on the print button in a toolbar or press Ctrl P and here we go. But in fact, if you have a large set, it won't fit the page exactly as you imagine. Let's see how we can set our weather page to look good. Click on the print button on the toolbar and this will open the print setting window. Here you can see how your spreadsheet will look like on the paper. First, we can choose what we want to print. We see the current sheet as a default. Click on the arrow on the print box to see all the options. We can print the current sheet workbook or a selected cell. Choosing a workbook allows us to print all the existing sheets. Or in the Select menu, you can checkmark separate sheets. You can print a part of your page. Select the range of cells that you want to print and choose the selected cells in the drop list here. Let's choose the workbook sheet option and select weather sheet here. After that, we can choose a paper size by clicking on this arrow and select the page orientation. For a wide table, I usually lose landscape orientation, so we'll leave a check mark here. Then we can choose a page scale. Open the drop down list to see the options. To fit all the columns on our page, select the fit to width option. To print the whole sheet on a single page, choose Fit to Page. But remember that the text size can become really small and hard to read. We choose Fit to Width here. Also, as we have a large data set, we can activate the custom page breaks to control the layout. Check mark custom breaks and click Edit. The blue lines represent location of breaks. To move it, click on the line and drag it to the place where you need to break the page. You can see a current scale at the top. 
click on the Confirm Breaks button when you wish. Now we get our table on two pages. Adjust formatting and headers and footers as you wish. When you finish, click on the Next button in the upper right corner to complete the printer setup. Here you can select a printer or save as PDF. At the end of our tutorial, I would like to mention that in Google Sheets you can use various add-ons, which help you to work with your data more efficiently. To get one, click Add-ons in the menu, Get Add-ons, and a Google Marketplace will appear. A great tool to add to your list of add-ons is Coupler.io. It also has a web version. Let's have a look at it. This tool allows you to export your data from various apps such as Airtable, Pipedrive and Clockify and many more to Google Sheets. I constantly use this tool for data imports and getting my datasets in Google Sheets. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it will help you start using Google Sheets fast and easy. If you have any questions or feedback, share them in the comments down below. And also let us know which formulas and functions you would like to learn in our next tutorials. Don't forget to subscribe to Rails for Product Academy and also click the bell to get notified on our future videos. That's it for today and thank you very much for watching.